So we're going to jump back into Kevin Shields' testimony today, who is the prosecutor that was involved in the case of Maureen McKelvey. And he's discussing the case being referred from the police service of Northern Ireland, where they turn around and say they believe there is sufficient evidence based on Suzanne Winter's claims and report, which we heard her speak on last week. But interestingly, he does say that he details quite a robust bus process and does actually say that he didn't attach great weight to what the police said in it. And, and certainly it didn't have much impact on him. Let's jump straight into the inquiry. Turning then to your consideration of the file in the Maureen McKelvey case, could we have on screen please paragraph nine of Mr Shields' statement? It's page three. At paragraph nine you say this, the file was allocated to me on the 19th of February 2004. My role was that of directing officer, which is the PPS, then DPP, lawyer, with responsibility for considering the file and applying the PPS test for prosecution. The test for prosecution is set out at section four of the PPS code for prosecutors. It is met if, one, the evidence can, which can be presented in court is sufficient to provide a reasonable prospect of conviction, the evidential test, and two, prosecution is required in the public interest, the public interest test. What process did you follow when you received a file in respect of which you were being asked to take a prosecution decision? That's what I do with all files, I assess the evidence, um and if the evidence was sufficient, prosecute. So this obviously differs in, in the way of some of the civil cases where some specific tests weren't applied and possibly in some other jurisdictions. But here, in this case, there was a consideration of the evidence that was available at the time and whether there was a reasonable prospect um, and sufficient evidence for there to potentially be a conviction. In terms of what the file you received in this case contained, you address this at paragraph eight of your statement. If we could go back a page, please, towards the bottom, please. And you say, a file in relation to this matter was received from the Police Service of Northern Ireland on the 28th of January, 2004. The file contained a covering letter from Detective Superintendent P. McCauley stating that there was sufficient evidence for a prosecution. The file contained a further report prepared by Suzanne Winter, Investigations Manager with Post Office Limited, detailing that, in quote marks, the discrepancies summarised on the pension schedule indicated it is due to deliberate action and not error, and McKelvey is the only person with the appropriate access and opportunity. So he's relying on the fact that the police are saying there's um, sufficient evidence for prosecution and uh, both the prosecutors and the police are relying on Suzanne Winter's statement which we questioned when she was um, when it was put to her during her testimony. She's basically saying this is definitely deliberate. She's got the access and opportunity well. You know, the access and opportunity isn't a surprise. She was a sub-postmaster. All sub-postmasters would have the access and opportunity. But it's that clear statement in the investigator's report, which should be based off the evidence available, that it is a deliberate action on her part to commit a crime. Could we have that covering letter and underlying report on screen, please? It is PNI 701 underscore 082. This is the letter from Detective Superintendent P. McCauley. The Detective Superintendent says this. This file refers to a theft from the post office over a considerable period of time. And although the defendant makes no admission regarding these thefts, I feel that there is sufficient evidence to proceed with the prosecution for theft against the accused. So clearly, whatever got submitted in the end, despite the first one that we recall being rejected, that was submitted by the Suzanne Winter investigation team, clearly at some point got to a stage where it was thought credible enough and in the sufficient format for to also convince the police that there was sufficient evidence to proceed with the prosecution, despite the fact that there had been no admission from Maureen McKelvey who is the sub-postmistress herself. 
What, un what involvement did you understand PSNI to have had in this case before the submission of the file for a prosecution decision? Uh, the only involvement would be the report, uh, the file being submitted to um, criminal justice branch. They would have reviewed it and then forwarded it on to the, PP, or the DPP as then was. I guess the main issue here is kind of before it's got to Kevin Shields' desk here and, and what did that process at the Police Service of Northern Ireland entail for them to come to the conclusion that there was sufficient evidence to prosecute it seems now, certainly looking back in hindsight, that actually there were major discrepancies in terms of the report and the evidence available. And indeed, she was actually found not guilty at trial, so it didn't actually convince the court either. So the part of the process which seems to have failed beyond the post office is possibly that review by the Police Service of Northern Ireland because had they not agreed that there was sufficient evidence to proceed then it's not likely to have ever reached Kevin Shields' desk and therefore it would have never gone to court in the first place. There was no, uh, they appointed, my understanding is that they appointed a detective constable to oversee uh, the files to, to ensure that the evidence, the evidence was present. At the time, what was your understanding of uh, the police's knowledge of the po of post office cases in general? I, I don't know if the police had any knowledge of post office cases. Who had ownership of the investigation once a report had been sent by the post office to the police? The post office or the police? I would say the post office. How much weight would you have given the police assessment of sufficiency of evidence when you received the file with a covering letter in these terms? I rely on my own uh, view of, the of each and every file. Uh, the police recommendations uh, and views are solely recommendations and views. Um, so that seems like a robust process. He's saying, even though it is the police doing this, I'm, I'm not just saying I agree with it. He might take that into consideration in his um, review process. So presumably there is another opportunity to maybe see if anything's out of line. But obviously he's largely reliant on the post office investigation. They're naturally retaining ownership of it. A possible weakness in, in the process is maybe that when these files are passed by the post office to the police, that if the police do think there's sufficient evidence, that they then themselves perform their own investigation because they are both the law enforcement and investigatory arm of the state. That's all I can say. There's, there's, I, I wouldn't attach great weight to the police recommendations. You have said that this was the first and only case you dealt with which relied upon Horizon data. Prior to being allocated this case, did you receive any training at all from the post office on the Horizon IT system? No. When and to be fair, that is fine, isn't it? You wouldn't expect prosecutors to be trained in all the analysis big of Horizon data or the use of the Horizon system because actually that is the job of the investigator so in this in this um circumstance that will be the post office maybe by extension the police if they perform their own investigation it will be interesting to hear whether they did indeed form their own investigation or were reliant on suzanne winter's report and the evidence that she had gathered when you were allocated the case were you given any information about the horizon it system by colleagues who had been involved in post office cases? No. I would presume if he'd been made aware of the concerns that uh, yeah, at this time, you know, government certainly had. We saw the letter back from 1999 in one of the earlier videos where they had concerns about the stability of Horizon. Obviously, there were concerns in Fujitsu about Horizon due to the fact of the calls that were getting logged that we've seen by sub postmaster in the post office with apparent issues, including issues with balancing. And presumably, had that information been available to him, that would have had a material effect on his decision on whether to proceed with prosecution or not. Did you take any steps upon being allocated this file 
to understand how the data relied upon was generated before you took the decision to prosecute? No. Why not? I was relying on the information supplied in the, uh, in the statements of those people who were using the system, i.e. the post office employees.